Jake Ludington here at HP Discover, and I'm here with Jason Lancaster from HP's security software team. And the cybersecurity risk report that you guys released just recently has some uh, interesting findings. Would you mind sharing some of that? Sure, yeah. One of the things that we found was that the even though the total number of vulnerabilities that have been disclosed in the public domain in the last year have decreased, the number of remotely exploitable critical vulnerabilities is still increasing. Um, also, we found that mature technologies that you would think over time have become more secure, things like SCADA, uh, mobile applications, web applications, they're actually continuing to be more insecure. Um, the number of vulnerabilities in those is increasing, um, especially when you look at uh, things like web applications that have been focused on by security groups for a long time in terms of securing vulnerabilities within those, within those applications. Um, the most applications that are analyzed are vulnerable. So applications as a, as a security vector, that's not uh, something, I mean, other than patching vulnerabilities, that's, that's not something that has typically gotten locked down the way that, say, um, like, like Tipping Point has identified things at the edge. What, uh, what are kind of the, the changes that people are needing to make in their thinking around application security? Sure, you know, over time, the infrastructure itself has had a lot of focus on, on securing the infrastructure directly, um, you know, moving up the stack, a lot of focus on securing the, the server platforms, uh, desktop OSs, server OSs, uh, and those types of things. And over the last few years, there's been more focus on securing the applications themselves, you know, focusing on the entry point as an example with a web application that's publicly facing. But we have not reached a point where they are locked down, you know, as you say, and very secure. And now with initiatives like uh, big data and cloud, looking to move both um, the data and those applications themselves onto multiple servers uh, outside of your infrastructure directly um, onto you know, larger platforms, public platforms with uh, cloud offerings, that begins to complicate things even further. Um, because now the infrastructure that, that we owned that was secure, we're moving on to other platforms. Uh, and at the same time, we're taking applications that we haven't necessarily fully secured and moving them onto other platforms. You know, we put a lot of work and thought into securing data at rest, for example. Um, but now, with conceptually with big data, it is no longer at rest. It's in constant motion. Um, being broken up, um, distributed out, uh, things that we were able to leverage before, say with encryption, now it's much more difficult to encrypt this data that doesn't exist on a server, on a data store, that's now distributed across many platforms for you know, parallel analysis with uh, big data platforms. So if the, the actual ability to truly secure the data is, is imperfect, at best right now. What are some of the ways that you are uh, looking at identifying uh, the attack vectors um, as they happen or, or predicting that they're going to happen? Sure. You know, both big data and cloud bring a lot of advantages um, in, in their own respects. When we look at big data, we can leverage those analytics tools that have been used uh, by businesses for a long time in our security research. Um, so if you think about the, that web application that was, you know, had some vulnerabilities in it that's now moving towards the cloud, we haven't done a really good job of reaching into that application and understanding how it operates directly. So we may secure the infrastructure directly, we may secure the server that it runs on, uh, and we may front end that web application with technology to be able to detect things like SQL injection, cross-site scripting, um, various attacks, but the data show that it's not complete. Um, you know, there are still vulnerabilities, there are still regular compromises, even against systems that are thoroughly secured. And so being able to reach further into that application and understand how it operates directly is, is very important. Um, but doing that across many applications, across an, an enterprise environment as an example, would yield a tremendous amount of log data that would be very challenging to tackle in just a singular system. And so big data allows us to 
scale to the size that would be required to do that sort of analysis and detect events, detect incidents um, in a very short time period. You know, when we, as a security intelligence research organization, when we look at uh, social media as an example, trying to determine the interrelated nature of social networks, uh, when, you know, this particular actor, what networks do they associate with, um, who are they closely aligned with, we can leverage big data to bring in things like Twitter to identify those relationships, um, even things like time of day. So if I want to better understand an adversary, a particular individual, you know, if I track over time and trend when they tweet, what platforms they tweet from, I can begin to understand their sleep cycle, their work cycle. And that may point me to uh, a, a time zone, you know, geolocation just based on that, even if the tweets themselves aren't geolocated. Um, but trying to do that means that you're taking in a tremendous amount of data. You know, just the Twitter firehose itself, you're looking at an average of 58 million tweets per day. You know, with peaks of a billion tweets over five day interval. That's a huge amount of data just on one social media platform. And then when you add in other platforms, you know, Facebook, YouTube, Google Plus, uh, Instagram, now there's a huge explosion uh, in that data. And one of the things that we want to try to do is understand when something is relevant, when something is actionable, so that we can focus the resources that we do have on those particular areas. It seems to me that the, the challenge there would be knowing what to throw away, because uh, presumably there's a whole lot of data you could throw away out of those 50 million daily tweets. Sure, we're, we're absolutely looking for the proverbial needle in a haystack. Um, but the haystack is now an entire field. Uh, and so being able to identify when something that's a concept begins to go viral, begins to really garner a lot of support from more people, and, and detect that inflection point where that happens, the earlier we can do that, the more time we have to prepare for any attacks that are associated with that, the, uh, the more time we have to tailor our defenses. Um, and even if the threat is not to that level um, of severity yet, it allows us to take our analysts and focus their attention where it really matters. So how does Haven, which you guys are, are showing off here, fit in with this whole threat analysis picture? Sure, so Haven is a platform that integrates autonomy idle that can do unstructured data along with uh, ArcSight ESM that manages structured data uh, with Hadoop to provide big data analysis of those types of data sets. And those specific things we can do. Um, we can even do things like uh, understanding, say, sentiment of those uh, groups within Twitter, uh, hacktivist organizations, to understand when things are heating up uh, and begin to pay attention to where that is happening, you know, what operation has been launched, what is the, the issue that's being debated. Um, when we look at an enterprise environment, it allows us to take uh, all of the different identities that may belong to all of your employees and consolidate those into understanding who an individual is and monitoring uh, social media, monitoring uh, other platforms to understand the sentiment within your organization and that gives you the ability to understand where you may have troubled employees, uh, where there may be issues that you need to look at in a way that doesn't violate uh, any laws or regulations where you might monitor every single employee without cause. Um, here you can understand better where you may have an issue and then begin to focus in on that with cause. So that's kind of taking the concept of, uh, of like brand sentiment analysis and applying it to uh, some other real world scenarios that, that are less about do people like our product or not. It, it definitely is. Um, very similar. The challenge here and what big data provides is being able to take all of these different data sets and overlay them with one another and be able to do some comparative analysis across those to yield actionable intelligence. So. In doing this, are there are there any uh, kind of uh, big picture patterns that you have identified uh, as a result of, of doing this kind of analysis? Sure. As an intelligence group, uh, 
you know, we do this sort of work on a daily basis. Um, you know, we're monitoring Twitter, IRC, lots of social media platforms, um, blogs, and these sorts of things. And we identified a group called the Syrian Electronic Army uh, a while back and just released a, a research report last month on, on that group. If you followed the Twitter uh, account compromises that have been happening over the last couple of months, uh, this group is responsible for that. And so um, hacktivist groups in particular leverage social media, um, especially Twitter, to spread their message and uh, garner support for their cause and for a particular operation. And so we can leverage uh, big data platforms to sift through just an em enormous amount of data in automated ways that identify those hot spots and key areas that we need to focus in on.